Hello, so uh, in previous video we looked at finding volumes using the disk method and we used a relatively simple example. Um, I got a request though to uh, ramp up the difficulty a little bit on the video. So um, we're basically going to use the same technique as the disk method but we're going to ratchet up like three or four levels. So some, w some ways it's going to be more difficult is we're going to use the washer method which is a bit more advanced than the disk method. Um, we're going to rotate our shape around an off-axis line and um, we'll also be forced to integrate with respect to y instead of x. So we're definitely going next level on this one. So let's go ahead and write this problem out. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bound by y equals x and y equals x squared about the line x equals negative 1. So first thing we want to do here is plot this out. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this area here in between these two curves and we're going to try and rotate it around this line x equals negative 1. Kind of hard to visualize probably just by explaining it but we'll um, take another look at it but first let's write some of these equations down. So this line here is going to be our y equals x. This line on the bottom is going to be y equals x squared and this orange line here is going to be our line x equals negative 1 that we're going to rotate this area between these two curves around. And to get sort of a visual of what that's going to look like we can go ahead and animate this. So you can see that our area is rotating around that x equals negative 1 line. I'm not sure exactly what this solid looks like but um, what it definitely looks like, it would be hard to find it. Uh, it's actually not too bad though. So we'll start off as usual with our typical n equals 1 estimate, just to kind of get an idea of the approach we're going to use. So our general approach here is going to be to find an outer volume that looks maybe like this, and subtract an inner volume, called V inner, like this. And if we subtract in the peach here from this um, bigger volume in the green, we get our estimate, our n equals 1 estimated volume, which um, is going to look something like this, where you can imagine that this is like um, a hole that we've drilled out the middle of this um, bigger cylinder. So let's kind of think of it as like a hollow cylinder. So for this estimate, our outer volume is um, this cylinder here is going to have maximum radius. So it's going to be the radius of our maximum extent here and this maximum extent is going to be 1 plus there's another 1 here between our y-axis and our x equals negative 1 line so this total distance here maximum radius is going to be 2 and we can call that generally our outer and for our inner cylinder here we'll just use the minimum radius that we have in this whole structure and you can see that's going to be here where our structure basically touches the y-axis. So we just have that distance from the y-axis to our x equals negative 1 line. So our v inner radius is going to be 1. We'll just call that r sub inner. And the height of both of these cylinders is going to be the same. And it's just going to be the maximum height of our shape over here, which is just 1. So that's going to be the height of our cylinders over here. 1 and 1. So we basically define all we need to with our cylinders. We can go ahead and calculate this volume now. So V outer is simply um, the volume of a cylinder is just going to be this base area times the height. And our base area is just going to be pi times our radius squared. So that's what we have here as sort of our base area. And then multiply by our height here, which um, is just 1. So plugging in this 1 for our height and plugging in 2 for our outer radius. We end up with pi times 2 squared times 1, which is going to be 4 pi for the volume of V outer. And our V inner is um, going to be pi times our inner radius squared times H. And again, just plugging these in here, 1 for H and 1 for our inner. We get pi times 1 squared times 1, which is just pi. So our total volume of our shape down here where we've subtracted that... Um, that inner volume is just going to be our V outer here that we'll plug in minus our V inner of pi. So that total volume is going to be 4 pi minus pi, which is simply 3 pi, and we'll call that our n equals 1 estimate. 
which of course is going to be a bit of an overestimate because this volume down here is much bigger than the one that we saw when we actually rotated the area between these two curves around. And it's much bigger because for our our large volume we use the maximum radius and for our inner volume we use the innermost radius. So that's going to give us the maximum extent here in um, the solid part of our um, hollow cylinder shape. So it's going to be a big overestimate, but at least it kind of, it kind of gets us close to the ballpark of the area we'd be looking at. And it kind of gives us an idea of how we're going to set up the, um, our method to find an integral to get the exact volume. So let's um, get a bit better estimate and separate this. Instead of um, n equals 1, why don't we just go with n equals 5. And let's clear out some of this, make some room. So um, imagine for this case, we have our outer disk, such as this. And we're going to subtract our inner disk. And it's going to give us this um, shape here which um, you can imagine that black is like the hollow portion. So this kind of looks like a washer, right? And that's why it's called the washer method because you end up with these these di these hollow disks that basically look like washers. So we could call this slice our V outer minus our V inner, which is equal to our, our volume we're actually looking for. And um, of course, this is just one slice. We want, we want to slice into five components. So we'd have these uh, slices on top that we can go ahead and add. And we're going to denote this one in purple here because we'll kind of take a look at that one, especially as our V sub I. So our total volume is going to be the addition of all of these disks, all five of these disks here. So we could denote that as V equals the sum from I equals 1 to 5 of our individual volumes of the washers. And we could find each of these individual volumes kind of as we've shown here by taking our outer volume and subtracting our inner volume. So we kind of do that for each one of these blocks as we increment from i equals 1 to 5. But in order to find these v outer and v inner as we increment our i, we've got to go ahead and define some parameters. So let's define one for our um, purple washer down here. So the thickness of it, we'll call that our delta y value, which um, of course will be the same thickness as our block up here and our um, disk up here. And let's define the outer radius of our washer here um, to be that of our v outer so we'll call this outer radius r sub outer. And similarly, we're going to want to find the inner radius of our third disk down here. So we'll call that r sub inner. So now we've made a little bit of progress towards the summation here because we can identify what our v outer and v inner are. So our v outer becomes this value here. It's just um, pi r squared, which can be the area of our outer disk, times delta y, the thickness of that disk. And the, That'll give us the, the volume of it. And then we're going to subtract the volume of our inner disk here, which is going to be given by pi times our inner squared times our delta y. So we're getting closer, but now we've got to define our um, r outer and our r inner. So it's not too difficult, but um, I would say this is the defining r outer and um, r inner is the most difficult part of this problem. Um, but before we look at r outer, we're just going to want to define our y-axis and where it starts. So let's just say this is our y equals 0 line here. And the distance to our i-th disk we'll call y sub i. So if we want to find our outer, first thing we want to do is look at our y sub i distance. So this um, distance here shown in our washers corresponds to this uh, y sub i distance here. Now we can look at what our r sub outer would be for this specific y sub i distance. So our radius is going to begin at our x equals negative 1 line because that's what we're um, rotating about. So first we're going to have this um, value of 1 in between our x equals negative 1 and y axis um, because our radius is going to have to at least go that far. And then it's going to have to extend a bit and go out to this line right here. So the question is, what is this extra distance that we're going? Well, it's just essentially this um, x distance here to meet this y sub i on this line that we defined earlier as y equals x squared. So in order to find this, we'll need to um, determine what x is in terms of y for this line, which um, is simply inversing this equation. We have x equals squared of y. So we know if we've gone up y sub i and we're on this line, that that x distance has to be the square root of our y term. In this case, our y term is, our, is y sub i, so that distance is square root of y sub i. And with that, we can determine our outer. It's just this 1 plus this extra distance here. So it's going to be 1 plus square root of y sub i. Next, we're going to want to look at r sub inner. It's a little bit easier. 
And we're going to look at it for the same y sub i value. But for the same y sub i value, you can see our inner radius um, isn't quite as big. So our total r sub inner value is going to be the distance from this line here all the way out until we hit our, the line y equals x, which is right here. And that distance here, if we've gone up y sub i, um, we just look at our equation y equals x. So our x is just going to equal y. So this x distance here is just going to equal our y sub i distance. So it's just going to be y sub i. So our r inner is just this distance 1 plus this distance y sub i. All right, so now we've got the hard part out of the way for sure. So we've found r outer and r inner, and all we really got to do now is sub these in. So we take our r outer found here, and we sub that in for r outer. We take our r inner, sub that in up here for r inner. And then we're going to also, um, you notice we've got a pi and a delta y in both of these, so we can kind of factor both of these out. So we'll kind of factor this and the delta y out. And that gives us a new sum where we see our pi ended up here and our delta y ended up here. And then we just have our r sub outer squared minus our r sub inner squared here. Now at this point, we could solve for our delta y's and our y sub i's and um, find out what this uh, summation is from i equals 1 to 5. Um, however, it's actually a bit quicker and um, a lot more accurate, in fact exact, if we just take this summation, convert it into an infinite sum, convert that into an integral and solve the integral. But first, let's uh, clear out some of this excess that we have here. Now we can go ahead and convert from our sum from i equals 1 to 5 to an infinite sum, where i goes from 1 to n, and n is going to infinity. And this depiction still, still kind of gets at what we're doing. However, as n approaches infinity, these disks will get infinitesimally small. So we'll no longer have our delta y. We won't really have incremental y values anymore. We'll have a continuum of y values. And we could replace our y sub i in our radius terms here with y because our radiuses will be continuously increasing as we move up. So our nomenclature changes slightly. And let's um, clear some of this space out as we convert this to an integral. So we take our infinite sum here. And based on the definition of the integral, we change this into the integral of the same thing where we've replaced our y sub i with a y and we've replaced our delta y with a dy. And we're gonna, our limits of integration are um, going to start at 0, because we're going to start here at y equals 0. And we're going to move up to y equals 1, because that's the, ex the vertical extent of the area of interest here. So to sort of imagine what that looks like is we've got a, a washer defined at each of these y levels, like, such as the washer shown here in red. And we're going to keep adding these washer volumes up as we find them for increasing y values. You can see my washer is getting a little bit wider and wider as we go up. And I'm going to keep adding all of these until I get to y equals 1. And then we'll stop adding them. So that is kind of a visual depiction of what we're doing when we integrate this from y equals 0 to y equals 1. And um, before we move on and evaluate this integral, which we're ready to do now, um, it's probably worth showing a more general equation for the washer method. And that would be this. We have the integral from a to b of pi times the quantity of our outer radius squared minus our inner radius squared. And we integrate with respect to y, assuming we're integrating in the y direction. But this is our general disk method equation that um, you may want to write down may come in handy. But for now, let's um, go ahead and make some room here and pull the trigger on this integral. So first thing we can do here is go ahead and complete these squares. So um, we just FOIL this out, this uh, 1 plus y squared and this um, 1 plus y here. FOILing that out, we get um, 1 plus 2 squared of y plus y for this one. And this one over here yields this. And now we've got several like terms here. We've got this uh, one and this one that are going to cancel out. So we can cross those out. And we've got this um, plus y here and a minus 2y here. So we're going to end up with a minus y there. So doing that, we end up with 
this equation. And um, at this point, we're, we've simplified as much as we can, so we're ready to go ahead and find some antiderivatives here so we can integrate. So um, finding the antiderivative of this, that's just going to be y to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. This will just be y squared over 2, and this will be y cubed over 3. Implementing those antiderivatives, we end up with this. And now, of course, we just got to plug in 1 for all these y's. And then subtract from that when we plug in 0 for all these y's. So doing that, we end up with our equation over here, where when we plug in 0, everything just zeroes out. And the ones are pretty simple to evaluate. So this just becomes pi times 4 thirds minus a half minus a third, which finally gives us our exact value for this volume, which is pi over 2. So that seems like a pretty um, surprising value for the, what looks like a really complicated volume here, but it turns out to be just pi over 2, which, as you can see, is much less than our n equals 1 estimate, which was really a gross overestimate, um, as we showed before. But at least um, we can see that it is much less than our n equals 1 estimate as we thought it would be. So this is a rather complicated version of the washer method. Um, so if you can understand this and, and you can execute this and do it for a similar problem, you should be in great shape to tackle pretty much any washer method problem out there. Next video, we'll discuss the technique of cylindrical shells.